Well, Nick Modi joins us here in New York. He's a managing director of the Consumer Group at UBS Investment Research and specializes in the tobacco industry. Nick, thank you so much for being with us today. I have to tell you, I, I am not a smoker. I never, I never have been. This really kind of caught me by surprise. I, I didn't realize that these were out there uh, and you could buy them and they were gaining in popularity. Are we about to see a whole revival of smoking based on these e-cigs? Well, certainly right now, the big three, uh, Altria, Reynolds, and Laurel Art, are, are making an incremental push into this category. It's growing, doubling uh, over the last two years. We expect it to double again this year from $500 million to a $1 billion. And really, what, what's gonna, it's going to come down to the FDA and how the FDA wants to treat this category. And that's really going to dictate uh, the forward trajectory of this industry. So, so talk to me about what that means for, for some of our viewers who may not understand. FDA uh, is one of the many regulators here in the U.S. I mean, I've, I've got to think that there is a whole lobby of people who are so against smoking and worried about this that they're going to be after government regulators to put all sorts of restrictions on this. What, why would the FDA make such a difference here? So the FDA has regulatory oversight of the tobacco industry, and e-cigarettes are classified as a tobacco product right now. The bottom line is there are folks within the tobacco control industry, uh, the public health community, if you will, uh, that believe that this could be the answer to tobacco control. The science would certainly suggest that these products are less bad for you than cigarettes, though there's still more, need, more work needs to be done. So if the FDA kind of comes to the scientific conclusion that these products are lesser evil, then you might see them not tax it as aggressively and even perhaps allow the industry to communicate relative risk claims saying these products are less bad for you. In the end, I think the industry uh, is just trying to appease the public health community and trying to put out lower risk products. Mm. You know, the, 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 this has an impact not only, of course, for the tobacco's bottom line, but when we were looking at this, um, the advertising, tobacco was one of the biggest advertisers out there. The ads were everywhere. They, of course, had to pull many of them. They, they can hardly advertise anywhere anymore. Um, this doesn't have the same restrictions. Is that ability to advertise that will um, a huge growth potential for this sector? Well, I think it certainly has helped uh, some of the emerging players right now, whether it be Blue or Enjoy. Uh, but I would suspect the government's going to look at when they impose regulations if advertising in this category is going to still be allowed. So that's something that's still coming down the pike. We expect some kind of decision on that over the next couple of months. Nick, you've got to be worried about um, the, the health risk here um, in terms of whether this is a long-term buy, if this is a long-term business model for these companies. Um, you know, when we were looking into it, my understanding is the verdict's out. There are plenty of... Um, you know, health advocates that are concerned, that don't believe these are safe. Is that the biggest risk for this segment? Yeah, I think, I think that's really what it comes down to, because in the end, if the government endorses this industry or this sub-segment, uh, then you're going to see some pretty explosive growth. And if they don't, you know, you could see the growth peter out pretty quickly. All right, Nick Modi, fascinating stuff. It really was sort of not on the radar. We're going to watch it closely. We'll hope you'll come back uh, and give us your assessment in a few months as to how far this is going to spread.